What's up girls and guys? This is going to be a video about basic reptile terminology. First of all, I want to apologize for the poor sound. I'm recording on my MacBook and the mic sucks. Also, I don't know if you can hear it, but my fan is pretty loud. It sounds like an airplane about to take off from the runway, but anyway, this video is going to be on basic reptile terminology. This is pretty much what I feel that anybody who either owns or wants to own reptiles should know. There will probably be a couple of terms that aren't so basic, but they're very useful to know as well. So to start it off, reptile versus amphibian. Well, obviously, you want to know if you have a reptile or amphibian. And I know this seems like a no-brainer, but there are a lot of people who still don't know the main differences. Amphibian means living two lives, so one on land as well as one in the water. Amphibians usually have to stay by a body of water to prevent from drying out, whereas most reptiles don't have to do this. There are exceptions when you think about turtles, Chinese water dragons, even marine iguanas. These are aquatic to semi-aquatic reptiles, but the majority of them don't need to live by a body of water to prevent from drying out. Amphibians go through metamorphosis, which means when they give birth, they give birth to tadpoles, which have gills. They don't have lungs. Over time, these tadpoles develop into what they will look like as adults, which are miniature frogs, for example. Reptiles, when they give birth, they give birth to young that look pretty much exactly what the adult's going to look like. Reptiles never have gills. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't believe any reptile has gills. Amphibians, at a point in their life, have both, have either lungs or gills. The skin texture on amphibians is typically pretty smooth. Sometimes it's moist and sticky. And they have mucus glands. Well, reptiles have dry, scaly skin. The scales sometimes are small, sometimes they fold in, but if you ever run your fingers down an iguana's back, it'll be rough compared to if you run your fingers down a frog's back. Some examples of, amphi of amphibians sorry, are frogs, toads, newts, and salamanders. Some examples of reptiles are snakes, lizards, crocodiles, and turtles. These are both ectotherms, meaning they need to thermoregulate from an external source the sun. Now amphibians have a couple of defense mechanisms. Some or most of them can secrete toxins from their skin and most of them can bite. Probably all of them can bite. Anything with a mouth can bite. They don't have claws or nails so they can't typically scratch you. Reptiles can claw, scratch, tail whip you, bite you, and a lot of reptiles obviously have venom. As far as the eggs go, amphibians typically have like a soft gel surrounding the egg and there's no hard covering. Reptiles have amniotic eggs, which means they have hard, leathery eggs, which are typically laid on land. Amphibious eggs are either laid in water, near water, or in something really damp, where when they hatch, they can drop directly into the water. This is one I hear a lot. Arboreal versus terrestrial. So if you have an arboreal reptile, that means it likes to spend most of its time either climbing or up in trees. Whereas if you have a terrestrial reptile, it likes to spend most of its time on the ground, in caves, digging, things of that nature. Now there is an in-between. Some animals are considered semi-arboreal, like the bearded dragon, by most people. It likes to climb, but then it likes to spend a lot of time on the ground. A true arboreal reptile would be a chameleon, veal chameleon, Jackson's, any kind of chameleon, or a crested gecko. A true terrestrial reptile would be a leopard gecko. Another one I hear a lot is diurnal versus nocturnal. What you need to know about that is diurnal sounds like day. That means your animal is active and awake during the daytime, whereas a nocturnal animal, reptile, I'm sorry, is active and awake and probably hunts at night. Point of note is that if you have a diurnal reptile, it probably needs to be exposed to full spectrum lighting, which I'll talk about later. Next, we have endotherms versus heliotherms, are also known as ectotherms. <laughs> Endo sounds like inside therm just think about therm as heat or temperature so that means that they regulate their heat by internal processes whereas ectotherms or heliotherms they need to regulate their temperatures by use of external external stimuli like the sun next we're going to go into full spectrum lighting now what that means is that your reptile needs to be exposed to all wavelengths of light Without going into too many specifics, it means UVA plus UVB. Now, when you hear UVA, you need to know that it is responsible for stimulating behavior such as feeding response, breeding response. It also affects the way the reptile sees its enclosure. This is pretty much just light and heat for them. 
UVB is far more important. I mean, they're both important, but UVB is more overlooked, I should say. When these UVB rays hit the reptile skin, the skin produces a vitamin known as vitamin D3. Now, for us humans, we hear vitamin D, we probably think about milk and calcium, strong bones. This is very similar in reptiles. Vitamin D3 allows them to metabolize calcium. If they are not exposed to UVB rays, they can't properly absorb the calcium and metabolize it to where it's useful. So these will be animals who will end up with metabolic bone disease, really weak bones, and probably other problems. So as you can see, UVB is very important. Full spectrum, this refers to UVA, which is the heat and the light for feeding response, breeding response, and lighting the environment, as well as UVB rays. Substrate or bedding just refers to what you put on the bottom of your enclosure. It's worth noting that a lot of reptile owners do not believe in using any kind of substrate that can be ingested by their reptiles. This can lead to impaction, which means that their intestinal tract is blocked because they cannot pass the gravel or the rock or whatever they ate. They can't pass it. So this also can end up in death which is why a lot of reptile owners err on the safe side and put their reptiles on tile or paper towels, reptile carpet, pretty much things that can't be eaten. Gravid just means pregnant. You have a gravid reptile or animal. It has eggs or babies in its stomach. Brumation, you can think about brumation as the reptile equivalent of hibernation. Sometimes these animals need to go down for a season and rest Tegus, I know, can rest up to seven months out of the entire year. So just think about brumation as hibernation. Now, these three aren't really basic terminology, but I figured they couldn't hurt to know. They deal with birth. So they are viviparous, oviparous, and ovoviviparous. Viviparous means the animal gives live birth. So mostly mammals are viviparous, but there are some viviparous reptiles. I'm not sure if all rattlesnakes give live birth, but they're are specific species of rep rattlesnakes that bear live young meaning when the babies come out there is no egg no eggshell they develop in the stomach and come out looking exactly like a miniature form of the adult oviparous means that this animal lays eggs so when we think about this we probably think about birds right away but reptiles include bearded dragons crested geckos leopard geckos I believe iguanas lay eggs, but there are a lot of reptiles that lay eggs as well. Ovoviviparous means that there is or was an egg at a time which could have hatched inside of the mother's stomach. So ovoviviparous and oviparous are very similar, but the difference is that with an oviparous animal, the egg is laid and the animal hatches outside of the stomach, whereas an ovoviviparous animal the egg can develop inside the stomach as well as hatch inside the stomach after which the child will be delivered. A little bit confusing, but the next ones are, I would hope everybody would know these, carnivore versus herbivore versus omnivore. To keep it as basic as possible, carnivores eat meat or other animals, herbivores eat vegetation, probably fruit as well. Omnivore is a combination of both carnivore and herbivore. An omnivore will eat animal matter as well as vegetation. And that pretty much ends my list of what I think are basic terms for reptile owners. So if you have reptiles and you didn't know some of these things, don't beat yourself up. I know a lot of you are looking at this video like a lot of this stuff is, you know, common knowledge, but truthfully it's not. I've seen people who don't know a lot of these things and I'm not knocking them, but you know, do some research and you'll find out. This is really my first informational video. I'm hoping to put up a lot more. My next video should be live video of my animals. If you feel like something wasn't clear in this video, or you feel like something should have been added or removed, please leave a comment, let me know. I'm perfectly open to suggestions and constructive criticism, keyword constructive. If you're gonna be rude, please don't leave a comment. Other than that, Everybody have a nice day. Go Boston Celtics. Go LA Kings. I know I'm going to get crap for that, but anyway. Peace.